Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. We've talked recently about the subscription model coming to cars, meaning that you can buy a car in the future and to use some of the features on the car, you have to pay a licensing fee or a subscription fee for a monthly basis. So for example, you might buy a car that has heated seats, but they won't function unless you pay a monthly fee for them. Now, some of the companies have talked about this have also said, well, we might also sell you the functionality so you can buy it for the one-time payment. But of course, the issue is when they find out that people are willing to pay the monthly fee, will they get rid of that one-time buy? But there was a big brouhaha recently because BMW had a website uh, in Korea that showed that all of this was happening in Korea. And the media picked it up and ran with it. And now BMW is claiming there was some kind of misunderstanding there, but they're still doing it. It's just not in Korea. So I'm not quite sure why they make this big deal out of correcting this when in reality, most people in America don't care if it's Korea or England or where it's happening. The fear is if it's happening over there, it'll happen here eventually. So from CNN Business, Peter Valdez de Pina wrote this. Michael sent it to me. Thanks a lot. Why BMW is offering heated seats on a monthly subscription? I think we know, but uh, BMW is now offering British drivers the option of enjoying a heated seat on a monthly subscription basis. Of course, you can still get heated seats the regular way, but for those who didn't do that or who bought a used car with the feature, BMW will enable it for a monthly fee so you can try out having a nice warm seat on a cold day. So heated seats purchased on a subscription basis will cost British drivers 10 pounds a month, roughly about 12 bucks. Now, there were many media reports recently that BMW launched the program in South Korea, but that was a misunderstanding according to BMW. In that case, it was a database error, a database error in BMW's online store according to BMW. But of course, that's not real. The British program is real. BMW executives have spoken for years of plans to offer certain features, including heated seats, on a subscription basis. The heating coils and other hardware required to actually heat the seats will already be in the car. And by the way, I had several people pointed out to me, in case you're curious, there is an argument to be made on some level that if you have to build a car with heated seats and the very next car coming down the assembly line, no heated seats, it does cause a little bit of an issue on the assembly line, making the assembly of the cars more complicated. So some people would say, put heated seats in every single car, and then just if somebody buys the car but doesn't want heated seats, they just don't pay for them. But of course, the components have a cost. And the question is, which is easier and which makes them more money and which is a lower cost to build? Those are all factors and it's gonna depend on which options we're talking about. So I don't know how expensive the heated seat elements are, but that is one of the arguments. The benefit would be a lower upfront price for the car and potentially the ability to only pay for the features when it might be needed, like in the winter, or of course, only the features that you want. Also, second or third party owners would be able to pay or not for features they want or don't want. So let's suppose you got the car and go, I like heated seats, so you're paying for them. You go to sell the car, the person who buys it goes, I hate heated seats, I don't wanna use heated seats. Well, then they don't have to pay for them, do they? So that's the argument. Naturally, if BMW drivers who opt into the program don't make their payments, BMW will turn their seats off. <laughs> now, which features will be offered by subscription will vary by market. And of course, people were joking uh, in the comments in my last video saying, yeah. And they're gonna, of course, you know, say, well, if you want the brakes, you gotta subscribe to your brakes. <laughs> you want headlights, you gotta subscribe to those. Those are jokes, of course. But the question is, how far can they push this? Uh, heated seats are always given as an example of something that might not be offered by subscription in the United States because American luxury car customers don't expect to have to pay monthly for them in that way. So, uh, you know, so heated steering wheels might be offered by subscription. BMW said in 2020, that has not happened yet though. Some other features are already being offered by subscription in the US. Currently, for instance, North American BMW owners can separately purchase remote start functionality that allows drivers to start the engine from some distance away so the car can warm up. Now, I've mentioned that before, and for some odd reason, every time I mention that, I get one guy who says, that's not true. 
Don't argue with me. Argue with BMW because they say it is. Another function called BMW Drive Recorder, which uses the car's external cameras to make video recordings like a dashboard camera, is also available by subscription. Uh, they're offered in an online market called the BMW Connected Drive Store, which includes certain car features under the title of BMW Functions On Demand. With BMW Functions On Demand, customers will be able to explore new software-based features on a short-term basis by purchasing a trial or buying that feature outright for a period of two, uh, time or for the life of the vehicle, BMW spokesperson Alexander Schmuck said in an email. BMW spokesperson Alexander Schmuck. Uh, features that were paid for when the vehicle was purchased will not then be available by subscription later. That sort of thing is simply offered as a way for BMW owners and maybe second or third owners to try out features that might not have been switched on when first purchased. Now, automotive feature subscriptions aren't limited to BMW. Subaru also charges a monthly fee for a remote start function through an app, although it also sells an unlimited remote start function for a higher upfront cost. And Tesla has used software to artificially limit the battery range of its lower end models for years, sometimes unlocking longer range in certain situations. Other automakers have also talked about charging subscription fees for regularly updated technologies like advanced driving assistance systems and navigation. And don't worry about your heated seats, though. Those are still yours. This is the issue, and that is that there are going to be things on a car that the manufacturer is going to say, if you want to use those, you got to pay the subscription fee. And the most common comment I see underneath these videos, other than I don't like this idea, is people saying, want to be able just to hack it? What? How hard will it be to hack it? And... I don't know, I don't know, but I'm sure that's something they're worried about as well. Meaning that as they worry about putting the subscriptions in place and getting people to buy these things, they're probably also talking to their software people saying, can you, by the way, make this kind of difficult to hack? You know, so there's that. But the other question people often ask is they say, Steve, let me get this straight. So the car comes down the assembly line, they put the heated seats in it. I buy the car, the heated seats are in it, and I wake up one morning and go, you know, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to subscribe to the heated seats. So you contact BMW and, and, you, and, you, and you pay them to turn the seats on. And you start paying them a monthly fee for the seats to be on. And the vehicle gets out of warranty and the seat dies. The heated seat dies. No longer functions. The question is, since you've subscribed to it, is it their responsibility to fix? And I'm going to bet they're going to say no. They're going to say no. You, you bought the car with a warranty. The warranty's expired. The warranty and the heated seats has expired also. And then they'll say, if you don't want to fix the seats, just unsubscribe from them. I suspect. But again, <laughs> people are going to argue with me and say, Steve, you're wrong. But you'd have to admit in that discussion, you can't say I'm wrong about what's going to happen in the future. Okay? So you can say you have a different opinion than me as to what might happen. But I suspect that's what's going to happen. And that's based on 31 years of close observation of the auto companies. Because that's what I do all day long is look at the car companies and how they behave and then sue them for building bad cars. That's what Lemon Law is. But I suspect that when the part breaks outside of warranty, they're not going to fix it just so you can keep paying for it. I suspect they're going to say, no, you fix it. It's your car. You bought it. You own the car. And of course, that is the tension, as we say. Because it is your car. You did pay for it. You just don't get to use certain things unless you pay for those also on top. And that's a licensing fee, which is a different thing altogether. So BMW wants you to know South Korea, that was a mistake, a database error. However, England, well, it's happening there. <laughs> so there you go, Michael. Thanks for sending it. Why BMW is offering heated seats on a monthly subscription. Peter Valdez de Pina wrote it. For CNN Business, questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. My parents didn't want to move to Florida, but they turned 60 and that's the law.